Welcome to my world. For most of my working life, I've been legally blind. I may not look blind to you, but for most practical purposes, I am blind. I cannot read normal sized text or see images. I can't recognize faces, even that of my husband when he's standing just a few feet away from me. I cannot write a check or easily find a quarter that I just dropped on the floor. I can't walk down the street without a cane or a guide dog, or I'll bump into a telephone pole. And I can't see the forbidden lipstick that my eight-year-old daughter has secretly applied before, <laughs> five minutes before walking out the door to school. <laughs> but this situation has not squashed my passion for trying to understand how deep ocean currents work. I, for my research, I go to sea and I release large numbers of, um, of neutrally buoyant floats which sink below the surface and drift with the ocean currents there. These observations have shown us that the deep ocean is not a stagnant backwater like previously thought through history, but if this video on the bottom right is working, it's actually vibrant with energy. My journey into blindness began 25 years ago. I was a graduate student at the University of Rhode Island. I had just passed my qualifying exams for a PhD in physical oceanography and had begun my dissertation research. But I was having the time of my life. But then everything started to fall apart. First there was the accident on I-95 at night when I hit the back of an 18-wheeler that somehow I didn't see had slowed down in front of me. Then a routine eye exam showed some blind spots in my central vision that weren't supposed to be there. Then the first diagnosis, that of macular degeneration, which is a deterioration of the central part of the retina, or the macula, which we use for our fine 2020 vision. It takes someone's vision from looking like this, eventually, to this. Then came the second diagnosis, that of retinitis pigmentosa, which is a degeneration of the peripheral part of the retina. I was facing the prospect, just at the beginning of an exciting career, of going blind from the inside out and the outside in. The doctor who made the second diagnosis, knowing not much about me, gave me some career advice. He said, Amy, I don't think you should pursue this career as a research scientist. I think that you should do something else, like maybe science administration, if that was easier. This was devastating news to me. I didn't know what to do. I had not heard of either of these eye conditions. I didn't know anybody, not a single person, who was blind. I feel now, and I've told that doctor so, that he should not have given me that career advice. But it's not surprising, given the, given the statistics. In 2004, the American Foundation for the Blind reported that the unemployment rate among blind people of working age is about 67%. 67% unemployment rate for blind people. So the prospects of landing a job or, and keeping a job looked dim. Forget about being a professional scientist. But my savior in this case came in the form of a gifted low vision specialist in Boston named Gerald Friedman. He was optimistic. And he, unlike the ophthalmologist, knew that there were devices and technology coming down the pike that would help visually impaired and blind people like me participate in school and the workplace more readily than ever before. 
He set me on the path of these new technologies, which I've exploited ever since to help me do my work. He was so enthusiastic that when he first heard that I was an oceanographer, he said, oh, no problem. We'll take a dive mask and fit it with a special lens, and then you can dive and you can see everything you need to see. I was really sorry to have to tell him that I don't dive. <laughs> but I do use uh, every day a lot of the technologies that he introduced me to. And I'm just going to demonstrate a couple of those for you today. The first is called a screen magnifier. And it does just what it says it does. It magnifies the computer screen. Now, on this desktop, you see normal size desktop. Windows M, desktop. You're going to hear a voice. I'll explain that in a minute. Um, I use the screen magnifier. I have to listen. Enter. Uh, mainly to view graphics. So here you see a graphic. This is one I happened to publish um, last year in the uh, journal Nature on the pathways of the great ocean conveyor belt. It shows a complicated circulation diagram up here in the top panel and the trajectories of some more of those floats in the bottom panel. Now, I can't see that size at all. I can barely see that there's a plot on the screen. But this software, this screen magnifier, allows me to increase the size to any comfortable size that I can see. Ship window Z. Ta -da. And this is now you're looking at the magnified desktop. And uh, I can increase the magnification to read any little bit on the screen. The circle helps to, uh, me to find the mouse in the middle. Uh, because with central vision loss, you pretty much everything you look at goes blank. Really helpful. The, uh, this software I also use somewhat to look at text. And I'll show you an example of that. Close this. Step four. Windows M, desktop, full page, Helen Keller, quote, enter. Okay, I just opened Microsoft Word. Microsoft Word. Helen Keller, quote, dot, dot, print, edit. And I have a quote here from Helen Keller, which I can see, I can increase the size of the text large enough to see it. But my vision has deteriorated to the point where it's actually not efficient for me to read this size text anymore. So in this case, I now rely on what's called a screen reader, which actually reads uh, what's on the screen, what's highlighted or whatever, I, when I give it the command to read, it will read. Now I'm going to reduce the size again so that you can see the whole screen. Ship window Z. Ship window Z. There we go. And I will tell it to go ahead and read this line. Home quote. Quote, no pessimist ever discovered the secret of the stars or sailed in uncharted land or opened a new doorway for the human spirit. Quote, Helen Keller, U.S. blind and deaf educator, left parent 1880-1968, right parent. Was that too fast for you? <laughs> slower, 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 Okay, I'll slower, give you a break. Slower, 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 slower. <laughs> Helen Keller. Helen Keller, U.S. blind and deaf educator, left parent, 1880-1968, right parent. Well, that's the beginner speed. You would need some work. But I've, I've worked at it pretty hard now. And um, Windows M, desktop, I folder view, list view. Helen Keller, use this to move technology to now to read all my scientific uh, literature. G, Jetsuip et al, enter. I'll show you an example. Keller, quote, dot, dot, dash, Microsoft Word, print, edit, Jetsuip et al, GRL. This is uh, just a typical scientific article from Geophysical Research here. Letters. Cool. And I'll just arrow down to some real text here. And this is about the speed that I would read it at. Direct observations of the grand banks have raised a quandary concerning the pathways of the lower branch of the meridional overturning circulation colon in contrast to more current meters that depict an intense narrow deep western boundary current left parent DWBC right parent observations using different flow types failed to show this continuous explored path. Here, this issue is addressed by a Lagrangian analysis space, period. It's an acquired taste. <laughs> Thank you.
Now, this technology has advanced to the point where many blind people consider blindness to be just a nuisance. I don't completely agree with that. How many parents, teachers, and doctors lower their expectations for blind children and adults about what they can achieve in life, just like that doctor tried to do to me? I'm afraid there are too many people out there. Society's got to catch up with the current state of the technology. And I need your help to spread that word. The next time that you meet a young blind adult, see possibilities. Thank you. <laughs>